Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, we're gonna put the R bath stripes on our 595 Snoopy. Okay, so now we're up in the air, we just gotta get this area of the car very, very clean. So I'm not gonna wash it using suds or anything. I'm gonna basically use a bit of demon clean, active clean, this is basically degreasant, to wipe over the side of the car. And then once it's properly clean, we'll use some alcohol spray on it to make sure there's absolutely no residue that can cause us issues. <laughs> It's a good way of getting to know your car's bodywork as well, just getting in really close. One of the things that wasn't previously evident was quite a lot of scuffing on this sill extension. People's feet getting in, I guess. Some 70-30 ipropropyl alcohol. That will take off any grease left behind by the cleaner and by my fingers. Also, any wax on the car will come off with this. Important to do the door jam curve because your sticker is going to touch that. These are the stripes I've gone for. They are original equipment style, but not bought from our bath because OE stickers factory fit would be um, 85 pounds for you to fit yourself versus these which I got from an independent supplier are patterns exact replicas if you like of the originals for 39 you can get all sorts of variations so it's just down to perfect um, personal preferences. Don't have to go with the original style, but I do like the original look. And there are three stripes for each side. The main stripe, the little extension piece for the front wheel arch, and then this fade out section, which goes on the B panel just behind the door. The next thing you want to do is lay out your decals with the backing paper and everything intact using magnets in order to get the line right. This is kind of the most critical step because when they're attached, you'll, you'll notice if it's not in line. So take your time. Lots of adjustments at this stage, whilst it's nice and easy. 
and uh, if you're using good quality decals like mine do cost a little bit more but things like that little tab on the back is to give you the spacing for this gap to be right so it's on one of the stickers the big one this little uh, knobble and you line that up with the edge of this one so that you know you've got the gap right if you're following if you're using the above standard um, pattern then you want to make sure that none of the black bits are actually going to fall on the gap so this one has to come close but not touching the gap and the easiest line to follow is to fit your back piece first because that's very obvious and everything else follows on from that and the bottom edge of this should follow a crease in the door but that is subtle and the front edge you want to fall sort of a millimeter inside the front of the arch and a millimeter inside from the gap but yeah challenging because it depends how far up and down you are in the door as to how much you get again kind of relies on getting that back end right first following through if you're as anal as me you could also drop a laser on it you need a laser level with a locking feature because your car won't be flat and what I mean by a locking feature okay so the car isn't necessarily sitting on the ramp flat there's a feature on this which means that if I decide that level is over here whoops I can lock the level at a particular angle and then tilt the whole level and the line will tilt with it and if you mount it on a tripod like I am then you can go up and down to adjust things so I'm not after flat I'm after straight that suggests it's dipping down a bit in the middle but always remember throughout this far more important than being straight or being level is looking straight or looking level remember to mark your masking tape with some little registration marks that way you go up and down and left and right and then we've done the first one here basically peel off your backing paper wet the body panel with a bit of soapy water wet the back of the sticker with soapy water put it back in position and then squeegee out the water and we're going to leave it for 10-15 minutes before we peel that one off but we'll get on and do the next bit now Spray sticker. If I do that, it can run down. Tell me when you're ready. Right, can you see your lines? Gotta to come towards me a fraction. There. Hang on a
Once you've thoroughly squeezed it and uh, allowed 10-15 minutes for the water to start to dry off, you should be able to just lift the backing paper off gently. Having soaked it on the back side should make the glue very weak. A few bits on here that are still quite sticky. Can you get the scissors? Hang on, Mom, stay here. Obviously, it's more a permanent stick if it's done dry, but you've got no room whatsoever for boo boos, have you? No. Peeling the backing paper off the sticker is far easier if you're on a flat surface we discovered and you can kind of fold it over and drag it back. It picks up less of the decal onto the backing paper, just that little bit there you saw by Joe's thumb. Or if you do it without being flat on the surface, it's every few millimetres you're doing that. Whereas this is just the odd little bit, like that stubborn bit there. Much easier on the flat. Wow, I reckon the first side is three quarters an hour. The second side is about 15 minutes. <sighs> I'm ready. Juice. Is that clean, Joe, on the front edge there? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Knuckle scrub. Oh. Right. So that now is squeezing into position. So far. Mm. I think it's looking good. That's done. I'll spray the back to release it a bit. Yeah, put it on quite a while before it Mm-hmm. Loosen the glue up. So there's no real secret to doing these sorts of things. It's just patience and uh, time. So when we put the stickers back on with the backing paper off, we just aligned the marks. Now a little bits of masking tape on the bodywork, so we knew it was in exactly the same place. Rubbed it down squeegeed it out with a little plastic spatula piece of rag wrap around the end just to scrape it through the uh, transfer paper to move most of the water from 
underneath it. Then we sprayed the back with soap and water to basically dissolve the adhesive that's attaching the transfer paper to the sticker just a little. You see this is falling off, but you'll have to peel most of it. That's unnormal. Unnormal? Unusual is a typical word people use. And uh, once it's off, you will have to go over it with, again, uh, a little squeegee wrapped in a piece of rag or a silicon squeegee just to make sure it's well pushed down and you've squoozed out any air and any water that's trapped behind each of the little elements. air bubble just here and just get a piece of cloth and a spatula and work it to the edge there we go and it burps water out it's a lot easier to get air bubbles out when you've used the wet technique than if you've done it dry There's some advantages to dry as well you know when you stick it on it's stuck so you don't have the problems with the transfer paper picking the black letters up again um, it's a lot quicker but the wet technique allows for a little bit of maneuvering after you've applied it and it makes it a lot easier to remove any mistakes air bubbles or just reposition something join our channel then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos and please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos and below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat